which is the number of agreement. Anything that has to do with two is a number that deals with couples. That is why in the Ark of the Covenant, they said animals must come in two by two. So two is a number of agreement and is a number of couples. So anytime I deal with two, I'm dealing with couples. But three is a number now that deals with completeness or what we call the finite of three or what we call the finite. So what happens? You've got the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So three is a number of fullness. Then you've got four, which is the number that concerns earth. This is very key because even the earthly ministry of Jesus concluded as four gospels here in the earth realm. Then you've got the number five, which is the number of grace. And then you've got the number six, which is the number of man. And this is the key now. Then you've got the number seven, which means completeness, fullness. It is even the same day that God rested. So anytime we deal with the fullness of something or the completeness of something or something that is overall finished, we deal with the number seven. So there are seven types of husbands out there and there are seven types of wives. And if you don't understand this, today will be your day that you'll be able to understand. So if you are dating someone and you want them to learn these types of things, send this stream over to them so that they can learn the types of husbands and the types of wives before you even decide to marry something that you do not want to marry. There are a lot of people today who are in marriages that they did not calculate how those marriages were going to go. But if you're able to understand the type of person you are with before you even marry them, you may find yourself in a different pedestal in life. So let's get on to it now and let's build on this. We're going to be taking our reading from the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 2. And this is where we're going to learn a powerful nugget on the seven types of husbands. Now, the first type of spouse that you need to know, I'm going to call this spouse the permitted spouse. This is a very unique spouse. And the reason why I'm going slow today is because some people came to me and they say, Rick, we really want to learn. We really want to understand. We really want to know how this thing actually goes about because we don't understand the types of women we're about to marry. We don't understand the types of men we're about to marry. So today I'm going to break it down to you slowly and nicely up until you are able to get it and able to learn in the degree that God wants us to learn. So let's build on this. Revelation, let's go to Revelation chapter 2. And we're going to, starting it from the Revelations verse 1 up until verse 7. And we're going to hit on the first nugget. Now, what, when was the book of Revelation written? This book was written when John the beloved disciple, not John the Baptist. John the beloved disciple was in the island of Patmos. And what happened was that they had gorged out his eyes. They had at the same time reached a pedestal where not only his eyes were gorged out, but he was put in a pit of venomous snakes. He was at the same time beaten. He was at the same time abused. And he was at the same time poured, placed into a, 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 a sort of a tunnel of, of oil where he, they tried to consume him. Now, what happened was when he started to write it, he started to write this book in symbolism. Symbolism means that though the people would read it, back then they would first read your letter before they sent it out to the people. And though he would, they would read the letter, they would think he was mad because of the certain symbolism that he had used in that particular area. So now when he wrote Revelations chapter 2 about the seven churches, he was detailing something that depicts the different types of people. Now, you see, these churches is not just talking about churches. It's also talking about the different dynamics of people that you find out there. It's also talking about the different dynamics of men that you find out there. It's also talking about the different dynamics of women that you find out there. So you're not just reading what's happening in a church. You're also reading what's happening in a person's life. And that is what we're going to detail to you today so that you have a great depiction of what is going on in Jesus' mighty name. Now, the first thing, let's go to verse 1. Verse 1 says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write 
these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks now i want you to know something here now he's saying these things he wrote them now he wrote them to the angel of ephesus now what does that mean the angel of ephesus is the pastor or the leader or the person in the place of Ephesus. Where was this church started? This church was started in the time of the books of Acts by Apostle Paul. So now they are writing a letter to the leader of that particular ministry, but there are certain things you need to understand that can help you understand a human being. Let's, let's build on this. So he says in verse 1, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now look at verse 2. Verse 2 is also very key. Verse 2 says that, I know thy works. I want you to focus on this. So he's telling this guy, I know thy works works so 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 when he says i know that works he then goes on and says that and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them to be liars so now there is a husband that is number one a hard working husband number two this type of husband is very patient as well this type of husband loves to labor the same is true for the woman these are you know partners that when you deal with them everything they are religion in life is work if they don't have work, they don't have a sense of purpose. If they don't have work, they don't see any value in you as a person. When you are married to a person who loves work, who loves labor, who loves this, they find that the minute you lose your job, these are spouses that will no longer take you serious. These are spouses, the minute you lose your job, they will no longer have value in you. These are spouses that the minute you lose your, your, your promotion, you lose your, your, your job, you lose your whatever it is that you are doing, they, they, they no longer see you as relevant. This is where, for example, you'll hear a woman saying that this husband was working, he's no longer working, even if he got fired at work she will not want to listen to it. Even if he got fired at work, he will not want to listen to it because labor is religion to them. So there are spouses that they only maintain a relationship when you work. The minute you stop working, they fight you. The minute you stop working or money does not come in anymore, they don't see a way to make a solution or to agree together. They see an opportunity to fight. Do you know why? Because labor is a religion to them. So there are spouses that even get married based on careers. They get married based on, you know, what level of class you have in your life. There are people that only enter relationships because they look at the value that you hold in the community. This is a very common ideology when it comes to, to the area of women because women see, you know, job as a security. They see, you know, the, the provision you do as a man as security. But you see, there are women that understand that you can go through a certain challenge in your life. And when you go through that challenge, they know that you're going to get back up. And they're willing to even pray with you. They're even willing to comfort you. But there are those spouses that don't see any value in you the minute you lose your job. The minute money doesn't come in. So now he comes in. Let's go into that verse 2 of Revelations chapter 2. And it says that, I know that where thy works and thy labor. And the Bible continues to say, and thy patience. These, these types of people, they are patient to a certain degree. So long as there's work, so long as there's labor, they are very patient with that particular person. These are, the, 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 the thing that will make you not to understand these types of spouses is that you won't know unless, so let's say for example you are dating. You go on dates. 
you go on those, you know, those nice outings. But the minute she hears or he hears that you are no longer having that particular job, the patience runs out. The patience is only there the minute you're only having that job. And these are very dangerous relationships or these are very dangerous spouses to have because they, the minute they see that the relationship is falling apart, they are interested in running after the policies. They are interested in running after, you know, whatever savings are there. They are interested in getting out of the relationship because the relationship is predicated on what you can give as opposed to who you are as a person and the purpose and the destiny that you carry. Now, I want, I want to beat more on this. Now, you might have noticed on the further verse, it says that thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. So this particular type of partners, they are, you know, they like to test things. They like to try out things. They don't like to enter into anything. And the reason why they do that is because labor and work is their security. And they, they are able to know when something is false. You know, they think so well. They think so strategically. They are so bound and blessed when it comes to that particular area. These are spouses that they are able to know when you're about to spend money on something that is false. These are spouses that are able to know that you're about to put on something that will not take you far in life. The Bible then goes on further and says that they have found that the apostles are fake and has found them to be liars. But in verse 3, he starts to break down something that's very unique about this type of person. And has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. So these are spouses that if you marry them from that day one of being in a relationship till the last day. This particular husband will work till they go six feet under. This particular wife will work till she goes six feet under. These fall under the middle class. They are not interested in businesses. They don't value businesses. So long as there is a monthly salary that is coming in, their relationship to them is 100%. That's why I say that these are dangerous relationships to enter because the minute the relationship starts to or the work life starts to fall apart, so does the marriage or the dating relationship fall apart because they don't see any other way to live but that which comes in consistently every month. Now look at this. It says that and has not fainted. They don't give up because why? Religion to them is work. These are, these are spouses or partners that the minute they see that the church or their relationship with God is getting in the way of their work life, they are more than willing to put God on the side. That's why I say that it's very dangerous to have partners like this because the minute you sit down there and say, let's go and pray and they've got a project that they need to finish, they are not even willing to give God 15 minutes. They're not even willing to give God 20 minutes. It's a dangerous place to be in. Let's, let's build up more on this. Let's go to verse 4 and, and let's learn on verse 4. Verse 4 says that, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. What does that mean now? In other words, they are willing to give up on that which is important in life for the fact of labor and work. You, when, you, when, when, when you want to, to go to a place of worship on Sunday, they are not going to respond. When you want to do something that is very important in the relationship, they are not going to respond. When you want to go out on a date with them, they've got too much work. When you want to go out and do something that can grow their relationship, they are more than willing to, 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 to leave that particular designation so that they can find themselves at a place where they are doing their work. The, the, that's why I'm saying that these relationships are dangerous. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's why the Bible says that, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love. The way he proposed you in the beginning is not the same way that he is today. The way she showed you love in the beginning is not the same way that she is today. So what happens is that anything that tries to come against that work that they do, they will find an opportunity to make sure that they cut throat you out. 
When you, were, when you started off in your relationship, you used to go on dates. When you started off in your relationship, you used to go and buy each other clothes. When you started off in your relationship, you used to pamper each other. You used to visit each other for movie nights. When you used to, you know, in your starting phases, you used to go out there and go on certain holidays. But today you can't. Why? Because the true nature of loving work or not coming back to your first love is what's causing them to walk away from you. And this becomes very dangerous. That's why the Bible here is telling you, it says that they have left their first love. That's why as a woman, you start to ask yourself, the love that this man is giving me is no longer the same as what we had in the beginning. The love this woman is giving me is no longer the same as what I had in the beginning. Why? Because they have left their first love. And when you meet a spouse that values their work more than the relationship, they value their job more than their relationship, they value their job more than the children, they value their job more than the well-being of that particular relationship, you are in a very dangerous place. They are even willing to lose the relationship over work. They are even willing to lose the, 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 the respect and the love that they have for you because work comes first to them. Whenever you sit down and say, you know what, we need to go to the Lord's house and start praying and worshiping. No ways. I'm going to the office. I'm going to push some work. Is going to church going to pay the bills. Is going to church. Is praying to God going to pay the bills. These are the types of statements you hear from these types of, of husbands or wives. These are the ones that tell you that, you know what, you're wasting your time in the Lord's house. You're wasting your time in church. You need to be working. You need to be going out there and doing a business. You need to be going out there and doing this particular stuff because these types of spouses or partners are very dangerous because they will leave you not attending anymore to the Lord God Almighty, not attending anymore to your beliefs, not attending anymore to that which you believe because to them work is religion. I said it, work is religion. When they see their boss, their boss is their God. Yet the Bible says that you need to work as if you are working unto the Lord. The Bible says that do not labor for anybody. Labor for the Lord God Almighty. So when these spouses come in your midst, their mandate in life is to make sure they please their boss. They don't sit down and regard the Lord God Almighty. They don't sit down and regard their husbands. These are, you know, when you are married to these types of women, they will make sure that they attend more to that male boss than their male husband that's sitting at home. They will make sure that they value their male boss more than the actual husband that is sitting at home. They will make sure they praise their male boss more than the actual husband that is sitting at home. Do you know why? Because work is a religion to them. These spouses at the same time, the minute they realize that, 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 that work is a God unto them, they will make sure that you know it, you understand it, you obey it and you respect it. They are willing to come back 9 at night. They are willing to come back 10 at night. They are willing to come back 11 at night. And with the minute you confront them to say that, you know what, our faith is dissipating. We're no longer living according to the principles we've set in our life. They will sit down and tell you and say, you know what, I don't care. Do you know why? Because the money I earn will pay for the toothpaste. Because the money I earn will pay for the rental. Because the money I earn will pay for the car. Because the money I earn will pay for one, two, three, four. They use... These are couples that mammon is their God. And I know some of you sitting there and watching and say, but Pastor Rick, we need to eat in our lives. We need to have balance. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 5, have moderation, have balance in life. If you don't have balance in life, you are in a dangerous position because where there is no balance, you are losing out in that particular sphere. Now let's build more on this. Let's go to verse 5 of the same book. And I want you to learn here because if you're not learning here, you're not going to grasp this. You see, I don't care about marriages that fail where spouses don't invest in their marriages. No, I don't care about those unions. I care about unions where people invest in learning more about unions. 
it is very difficult to restore a couple that does not value premarital counseling, a couple that does not value learning more about marriages, a couple that does not value listening to wise counsel out there. They only want to solve their marriages when and as when they are failing. That is when they value counsel. But so marriages where you don't look at counsel, learning, going to seminars, buying books on marriage, advancing your, whatever you do not put value and target in and learning and, you know, embracing, it's not going to grow. That's why even in counseling sessions, there are couples, I'll tell them straight, you're not going to, you know, stay with this particular partner. You're going to end up in a divorce. You know why? Because you're not giving value into your marriage. You're not giving value into your relationship. There are people who give more value into going into Facebook and TikTok and watching videos all day, but they don't sit down and learn. They don't sit down and absorb. They don't sit down and comprehend. They don't sit down and learn more about their relationship. That is why we have over 50 divorce cases in the Rustenburg Magistrates Court every day. Because there's no value that's being applied. You cannot win in something that you have not learned to embrace. Man, I'm preaching better than you say amen. Online, I'm checking it. I like what Star Soko is saying here. Balance is necessary. And I like what Mr. Lechet was saying here. Amen. If you are learning today, go ahead and type amen for me to see that you are being blessed. At the same time, tell me where you are watching from. Now look at this. Let's go to verse 5. Verse 5 says something very unique here. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. These are spouses or these are people that they are walking in a state of a fallen relationship with God. Because their God is a job. Their God is their labor. Their God is their money. So, they, they, so God comes to them and says that they are in a fallen state. They are in a fallen state. Why? They don't value prayer. The minute you say prayer, ah, why do we need to pray? Is God going to come down here and give us money? These relationships are balanced based on money and nothing else. These relationships are balanced based on what I can financially gain when it comes to the relationship. You know, when they walk into the church, they're not even going to sit down and put a Bible in the church. They're going to sit down and just listen and walk out the door and go home. And the minute they go home, that message will even fly in their, out of their heart. Do you know why? Because the cares of this world are being choked. They're being choked. Because of the worries and the beliefs that they are carrying out there. So the Bible is telling us here, say, remember in verse 5, therefore from whence thou art fallen. They have no strong relationship with God. They have no strong relationship in prayer. Their main mandate is that if my husband stops working or this man I am dating stops working, then the relationship as well, it stops working as well then whatever we have together also stops working as well. Whatever we have put together stops working as well. Do you know why? Because money is their first thing. Then the Bible goes on to say that and repent. So Jesus is calling them to repentance. He's saying, go back to your first love. Do you know that there are some people who work so hard that they, they, they don't even attend to their wives, they don't even attend to their husbands. There are some people who work so hard that their husbands and their wives are second guesses. There are some spouses that work so hard that their relationships are placed at the back. They are in the storerooms. There are some that work so hard that even when their husbands phone them, that even when their wives call them, it's an irritation. There are spouses that work so hard that even when their husbands begin to call them and say, you know what, honey, we want to have some dinner tonight. What time are you coming home? I'm coming back tomorrow. See what you eat. You are on your own. Oh, man, I'm preaching better than you say amen. You know these relationships. You know they exist and they are there. You know that this first group of, of, of husbands that are listening, you know what I'm talking about. These first groups of wives that are listening, you know what I'm talking about. No matter how much you sit down and try to hide this, you know, there are relationships that are only balanced on that. Let's build on the next one. The, 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 the verse 6, sorry, verse 5 says that, 
Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. So Jesus comes to these types of spouses and say, go back to what you used to do. You used to kiss your wife when she comes home. You used to hug her when you come home. You used to cook for your husband. You used to go out there and provide to your house and stay in the house. You used to go out there and wash your wife's car. You used to go out there and sit on the couch with the kids. Today you can't do it anymore. Do you know why? Because labor and work is your God. My goodness. And you know I'm preaching better than you say amen. When you stand out there and you look at relationships of this nature, there is a challenge when it comes to maintaining them. You cannot maintain a spouse that always looks at their boss as the final authority in the house. You cannot maintain a husband who looks at his receptionist as the ultimate person in their lives because of their work life. And you know I'm talking serious stuff now because there are some marriages that were lost along the way because the receptionist, the, that receptionist became the wife to that particular husband of yours. There are some relationships where that woman that does the coffee at work, that woman that sits down and tells your husband how to do things at home, that woman that sits down and iron your husband's you know, clothes at her home, Ah, you know what I'm talking about. You know I'm talking about that particular woman that sits down and says, I will bring your husband a lunch at work because he's always working. That, that woman that sits down and says, I will bake your husband muffins. That woman that sits down and says that, you know what, because he's always at work and he regards work as the highest thing, she sits down and tells him, I'll take you out for lunch. I'll take you out for dinner. I'll take you out for this. Why? Because work, he's always consumed with work and that lady is trying to get an opportunity to you know to win your husband over simply because he spends a lot of time at work then you've got that 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 woman that you know she she's always at work making her boss coffee making sure that she irons his clothes making sure that you know she prepares his his table making sure that she fetches his clothes in the car making sure it's like he's got a second wife and your wife is busy every day working in that environment and you're not understanding why she's not coming home you're not understanding why she's not showing value to the house you're not understanding why she's not why because of spouses that that put work before their first love, which is their husbands or their wives. It's time to restore some relationships out there. You know, some of these bosses don't know their boundaries. Some of these female bosses don't know their boundaries. Some of these male bosses don't know their boundaries. Some of these work husbands that we have don't know their boundaries in the work life. Some of these wives that we have don't know their boundaries when it comes to their work life. So we need to teach these boundaries in the Christendom so that you can have a relationship that works. Many people don't know the differences when it comes to this particular area and we're going to talk about it today. Why is that lady bringing your husband muffins? Why is that lady bringing your husband hot cooked meal in the house? Why is that lady bringing your husband some fresh set of clothes at work? Why is that lady bringing your husband people to wash your car? Why is that lady? These are boundaries that we need to set. Why is that man buying you as a wife lunch because of your working hard? Why is that man literally pampering you in the workplace? You see, we need to, we need to talk about these, you know, husbands, uh, work husbands and work wives. We need to talk about them. We need to dwell in these particular areas because what I've noticed in life is that there are people who have work husbands. There are people who have work wives. In other words, when they are in the environment at work, they have a wife in that area and they have a wife as well at home. You know, getting satisfied in the work environment. And I know I'm talking dangerous stuff right now because this is what will help you to actually maintain your relationship. How can a spouse be working at 12 at night at home? How can a spouse be working till 12 at night in the office? You don't give time to your spouse. You don't give time to your husband. 
Where do you have time to meet together and catch up about work? Oh man, I'm preaching better than you say amen. These relationships do exist. I remember when I was counseling one couple, you know, in the office. And what happened was that the husband was no longer coming home. Sometimes he would come home one in the morning, sometimes two in the morning. And what would happen is that the, the work lady would literally take lunch to his particular office. She would get home and cook a meal as a single lady and she would put it in a nice lunch tin and she would drive it over to that particular guy in that office working and she would go in with a bowl of water. She would make sure he washes his hands and feed that particular guy. And when he reaches at home at 12, he gets home and he says, I'm not hungry. I don't need to eat. Your food, your cooking is not that good. Do you know why? Because when he is there, no more at that particular home that he's supposed to be in at the time he's supposed to be in, he's got somebody servicing him. I know I'm talking some serious stuff right here because we need to fix marriages out there. We need to fix relationships out there. A woman will come to, to my office. She will sit down and say, you know, man of God, my husband is constantly working. He never comes home. I don't see him for four days, sometimes for three days. And you now understand that he's got somebody that is servicing him out there. During lunchtime, he's at Ocean Basket. During lunchtime, he's at Roco Mamas. During lunchtime, he's gone out there on a date. During lunchtime, he's sitting in an office in a lunch in a Tupperware that does not come from the house. Or she's sitting, she's being taken on dates every time. Do you know why? Because work is her God. This is, this is important to be ministered. If you're getting blessed by this, say amen. If you're getting empowered by this, shout amen. And tell me, those of you that are new, that are watching online, tell me how this is blessing you today. We have lost too many relationships out there to the work life. People in the middle class are working 9 to 5. Some are working 5 a.m. To, to, you know, to, to 10 p.m. All in the name of, I want to provide. And you sit down and your marriages are collapsing and falling apart. And you are losing half your estate because you don't know how to strike a balance in your life. I know you need money. I know you need money. Every lady that's watching me, I know you need money. Every man that's watching me, I know you need money. I know you need it. But strike a balance in your life. That is why Philippians 4, 5 says that have moderation in your life. This is key. This is the highest degree that you can ever walk in. But if you don't strike a balance, you will never maintain a marriage in your life. If you don't strike a balance, you will never maintain that relationship that you needed to maintain in your life. I know there are some of you, you know, you're serving a man of God somewhere. And, and you know, your wife doesn't come home on time. Your wife is always serving that man of God. You know what? She comes home at 10. She comes home at, you know, 12 o'clock in the evening serving a man of God. And she's working for the Lord. No, your first love is your marriage. Your first love is your spouse. Your first love is the one that you've committed vows to. God does not allow anything to split your union. Say amen if you're learning. Say amen if you're blessed. This is the environment that we need. You know, one of the things I've realized in life is that, you know, when somebody no longer loves their spouse anymore, they even start to use work as an opportunity to hide from their responsibility. This is the first types of husbands and wives. These are the so-called CEOs, the executives. These are the so-called, you know, I'm working this job. You know, these are the so-called, uh, I have made it in life. These types of spouses lose your job and you'll see their behavior. These are the types of, of, of husbands. The minute they see their wife losing a job, they no longer understand that they are the providers. These are the wives that the minute they lose their job, they, you know, the minute the husband lose, they, loses his job, they sit down and they say, this man is worthless. They, they, they value the degree of their husband based on the work that they do. The minute the husband loses, they no longer cook for him. They no longer appreciate him. They no longer speak well of him in front of the kids. They no longer, why? Because the job is their God. 
forgetting that it is God that gives promotion, forgetting that it is God that is our provider. The Bible says that he will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The minute the man loses his job, she looks at him and she says, you know what? We don't have a husband in this house. We don't have a, a man in this house. We don't have a vision better in this house. We don't have a man in this house. Do you know why? Because a job is her God. The very dangerous relationships. You know, let's, 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 let's go on this. If you're learning, say amen, type amen there. Let's see those that are getting blessed by the message that I'm sharing. And you know what? Sit down and share with five people and send it to your WhatsApp status so that we can bless more people by helping them understand you can work till you're blue in the face. You can work till you are more tan. You can work until you crawl on the floor. But that will not keep your marriage. There are men out there that are working till they even get heart attacks. There are men out there that are working till they collapse on the floor, but it does not change the degree of their marriage. It does not heighten the love in their relationship. It does not heighten anything in their relationships. You know why? Because it does not change your stance. There are some that are working until they have health conditions, but their marriages are going down. Their marriages are dying. Their love is dissipating. Their love is withering apart. Do you know why? Because work is their God. I sometimes sit down at home and I switch off my phone. You know why? Because I need to focus on my children. Sometimes I sit down and I switch off my phone. Do you know why? Because I need to sit down with my wife and speak to her and hear how her day went. Sometimes I need to sit down and be reminded that, you know what, Rick? You need to go and attend to your kids. You need to go and attend to your wife. Sometimes work can take the best of us. But when you have this type of spouse, marriages die. You know what, honey, let's go to church and praise the Lord on Sunday. No, I've got work. I can't do that. You know what? I, I will watch the service online. No, I don't need any prayers. What I need is money. Look at this. In verse 7 of Revelations chapter 2, it says that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. God is telling you here that if you listen, you will overcome the challenge. If you are a person that attends to what the Lord is saying, you will overcome that challenge. And this is difficult because when, when a job is a religion to a man, he will never see it fit until he gets to a place where his health condition is at the worst of the worst it can ever be. You know, the wife will never see it fit until she starts losing weight from stress. And she, she sits down and starts, you know, you know her, 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 her demeanor changes. She starts getting older quicker. Why? Because she's not attending even to her beauty when it comes to her husband. Somebody say amen. I hope you're learning today. I hope you're absorbing today. Because when we deal with this first level of spouses, it's important to absorb so that you can sit down and get your husband to listen before he goes to the grave with that heart condition. Before she goes to the grave with that heart condition. People working so hard to provide. But you sit down and you say, what are you providing for? I used to tell people, and I still do even to today, and I say getting angry and will only change your blood pressure. Your blood pressure will not change the situation. Your blood pressure will not change the fact that you are in need of growth. Your blood pressure will not change anything. Your blood pressure will only change your health. Your blood pressure will only change the degree of your sickness. Your blood pressure will only change how, 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 how soon you will go to the grave. You know, some people, if they could sit down today and attend to their spouses, they would not be as sick as they are. 
Sometimes you just need to sit down and eat that one pie that you have in the fridge and say, honey, so long as I'm spending time with you. Sometimes you need to just sit down and eat that one, you know, you know, half liter of Kool-Aid or cool drink that is left in your fridge and, and, and just enjoy it with your spouse. I remember that when, when me and my wife were starting out, I mean, we, we, we didn't have money, the, you know, the way that we do today. But we sat down and sometimes we'd go to King Pie and we would buy that one pie and we would slice it in the middle and we would share it. And we would have that one can of Coke. And while she is sipping, I would be sipping my session. When she would be sipping, I would be sipping. We would go to the cinema and buy one box of of. Of, of, of popcorn and would buy one box of some drink and would buy one set of nuggets and we would go into the cinema and share that box of, of popcorns. Why? Because we knew that our relationship has ha, ha, required us to attend to it. We would walk the streets and buy a packet of sweets and even if we couldn't afford two, we would just share that one packet of sweets. Because that's the power of building a relationship. That's the power you need to attend to your spouse. You sit down and you know when you deal with this first set of husbands and wives, the fact that you can't pay your car installment, you go across a hiccup, maybe somebody died in your family, maybe some uncle of yours is no longer living and you had to pay some money to support the family, they will sit down and say that is your uncle more important than paying the car installment? They don't see life as value. Because to them work is a God. And that's why when you sit down, when you sit down and your mama is struggling and your papa is struggling and you, you know, they'll sit down and they say, you know what? You are going to sit down here and you are going to first provide for this house. But when you have a loving spouse, they'll sit down and they say, you know what? I see your mama struggling. Let's take 30% of our money and just go buy groceries. Let's take 20% of our money and let's just go buy groceries and support that household. But when you have a spouse that work is their God, they don't value those things. These are people in family functions, they don't attend. When funerals are happening, they don't see any value of throwing money into the family. They don't see any value of buying something. Do you know why? Because to them, it's my work, my money, my house. That's it. This first set of, of husbands and wives, when you find them, that these are the ones when you're dating them, they'll always be asking you, what is your salary? What is your pay? What do you do? What do you do? This? Because they're looking for security. Never date somebody for survival. Never date somebody for survival. There are men today who are swindlers that are living in relationships with women for the sake of the jobs that they do, for the sake of the works that, that they do. I don't hear any woman saying amen. Because women know today there are swindlers out there. There are women that are working. There are women that have got beautiful jobs. There are women that, you know, they love the Lord. They, they, you know, they praise the Lord. But they get into relationships where they are sitting with swindlers. The swindlers are not there to empower them. Their swindlers are there to take from them, to benefit from that job. When you are a work-life person, and you value the Lord Jesus. And you value the Lord God Almighty. There are people that will come just to scavenge out of you. Never as a woman date a man because of the job he's got. You need to date a man because of the purpose he carries. Some women today will sit down and they'll be like, you know what? I didn't really know how far his destiny was, but I saw something precious about this man and I decided that I love him because of what I saw God had deposited in his life and I want to help him and I want to be part of, a, of, of his destiny and, I want, and, and I'm a suitable help me towards him. But today, you have women that are dating for survival. They're dating because they need a morsel of bread in the fridge. They're dating because they need a car. 
They are dating because they need a set of clothes. They are dating because they need all these types of things. Your first love is the purpose of God in that relationship. So relationships of this caliber become very dangerous. Men crying in the office telling me that, Lord, I mean, my, my, my pastor, my wife left me because I lost my job. She never married you in the first place because you, of who you are. She never married you in the first place because of the destiny that God has in you. She married you because you had that job. She married you because you had that money. There are women I've seen in my life that are still with men and they'll be like, you know what? At one stage of my life, my husband lost his job. We stuck together. We prayed together. God blessed him with another job or God blessed him with other set of clients and today we are where we are. You know, there's men out there that are sitting and saying that, yes, my wife must bring 50%. My husband must bring 50%. No, bring everything into the marriage. This is why marriages are dying. The first set of husbands, the first set of wives that I'm talking about today, a job is their God. A job is, their, is, is who they praise. A job is who they worship. A job is who they succumb to. A job is who they stand and agree with. So long as whatever you do does not line up with a job, they are not willing to work with you. So long as what you do does not line up with a promotion in their lives, they're not going to work with you. So if you are dating somebody today that has this type of mindset, get out of that relationship. If you are married to somebody today that is of this caliber, the Bible says in verse 7 of Revelations 2, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I sit down and I sometimes ask myself when I'm counseling couples, how did you decide to marry this woman? How did you decide to marry this man? They say, yes, we, we were working so well. And I say, the foundation of your marriage cannot be work. The foundation of your marriage must be God. Do you know that there are marriages today that God does not even focus on anymore? You say, Pastor Rick, how could you say that online? Let me prove something to you. Go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 2. And we're going to learn something unique there. Romans chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to fix marriages. We're going to fix marriages. Romans chapter 2. And we're going to take it from verse, sorry, Romans chapter 1. And we're going to take it from verse 21. We're going to take it from verse 21. And I want you to learn with me today. Because, you know, like, like what God told me, Rick, people, people that don't focus on building their marriages, like God said, I don't care. If you are not going to put value into your marriage, then why should God care? If you're not going to learn to build your marriage, why should God care? If you're not going to learn to study your spouse and your, I mean, your husband and your wife, why should God care? If you're not going to learn from the word of God, why should God care? If you're not going to learn how to, you know, submit as a wife, why should God care? If you're not going to learn to be the head of the house, why should God care? You know, God doesn't force people. He doesn't force people at all. Now notice here, let's take it from verse 21. And say amen if you're there. Those of you who are watching online, just say amen as we are learning here. Verse 21 says that, Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. So there are people that know that God can fix their marriages. There are people that know that God can straighten out their marriages. 
There are people that know, but the Bible says that they became vain in their imaginations. The Bible even further says that, but, but because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. There are many couples today, their solutions to fix their marriages is sitting in the church. Their solutions to fix their marriages is sitting in God's house. Their solutions to marry well is sitting in God's house. Their solution to actually have the best union that they can ever have is sitting in marriages. I mean in God's house. And look at verse 22. And, and, I, and I like this because it helps us to comprehend a lot of things. And say amen if you're learning. Verse 22 says that professing themselves... To be wise, they became fools, the Bible says. And look at verse 23. And it says that, And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image make like to corruptible men, and to birds and four-footed beasts and every creeping things. Wherefore, verse 24, Wherefore God also gave them up. God also, let me, let, me, let me read verse 24 nicely. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. I've said this many times. People have sat down and said, I know, but God doesn't give up on people. You just read it now. You just read it now. How long are you going to continue to disobey God when you know that you are a spouse that sits down and only values work as your God and only sees God when you've got problems and only sees God when you've reached the end of yourselves. So the Bible says that God gave them up so God can sit down and come to a place where he gives up on a person and say, yeah, no, but that's not the word we want to, you know, hear in our lives. Let me tell you something. You can have as much prophets and apostles and evangelists and pastors and teachers online telling you that God is going to give you your next car. God is going to give you your next house. God is going to exalt you. God is going to do this. Let me tell you something today. There are people that God has given up because they don't value their marriages. They don't sit down and put insight into their marriages. They don't want to learn how to develop their marriages. They don't want to give their spouses the attention that is required because the work is their God. There are people that are living in painful, painful, you know, situations in their lives because God is not first in their lives. There are people that are living in painful financial dilemmas because work is their God. And they thought that by working hard, they were going to be able to build their marriages. But they don't know that it is only God who builds. The Bible says Apollos, you know, you know, you know the Bible says Paul planted Apollos watered or vice versa. And then it says, but God gave the increase. It doesn't matter how much you work as a spouse until you place God first there are many changes that won't take place that's why we have displaced children that's why we have displaced you know children that are not growing within the confines of being with their parents so value your marriages but with this first set of couples you need to come to a place where you don't value your work life this type of husband and this type of wife are very dangerous in a marriage setting. These are, these are spouses that are willing to divorce you and go and marry somebody else who has a job and if they lose a job, they are also willing to divorce that person again and go and find somebody else to get a job. Dangerous place to be. And you know, we, we're going to be streaming this from today up until Saturday where we're going to be talking about the seven kinds of husbands and wives. And today you learned the first caliber. These ones, they don't value God. They don't pray. They don't fast. They don't see any need to walk with God. Instead of being in God's house on Tuesday prayer services, they are at Virgin Active trying to see how they can get themselves fit. Instead of being in God's house, you know, on month end fasting and prayer, they are literally somewhere else trying to find ways to increase themselves. Listen to me. I have met people with diplomas who earn over 100 grand. I have met people with PhDs who can't even pass 50,000 rand. 
your marriage will only grow when you start to value it. You might be watching me right now, sitting at your office, asking me, Rick, why would you say something like this? Because your wife is at home crying for your attention. You might be sitting at your office now as a wife and you're saying that, Rick, why are you saying? Because your husband may be sitting at home waiting to be given attention by you. This is the days where I've realized that no matter how much I minister, no matter how many books I write, no matter what I put down, there will be people that will always sit down there and not want to value the wisdom of God. It's time to go home and change your habits. There's nothing wrong with work. It's how you regard it that's the problem. It's how you put it first that's the problem. It's how you place it ahead of your family that's the problem. It's how you, you, you sit down and make it your God that's the problem. So I'm sitting down today and I'm telling you, you will only grow when it comes to relationships when you sit down and put value on God first. And as you're watching me, I know they're flighting all the books that we have got. There is a book that I wrote on marriage, Marriage Decoded. And one of the things I said in that particular book which we are launching on the one year celebration of this church. I wrote that the more you value money and work over your marriage and your relationship and that which is of God, the more you start to drift away from that which will actually give you peace and tranquility in your life. And this, this I need to set it out straight to you. Because you, because you get people, pastor, I need counseling. Okay, where's your husband? He's at work then how are we going to counsel you? You know, pastor, I need this. Where is your wife? No, she's at work. How are we going to counsel you? So, so the more we grow and develop in the things that God wants us to grow into, the better we become as a married couple. So make this decision today. Sit at home and start adding value to your spouse. Your job needs to have its place. Matter of fact, let's go to Philippians 4, 5 as the last reading. Philippians 4, 5. And I see they're flighting the book there. Marriage decoded. Get ready for this particular book. We're going to launch it. It's got 18 powerful chapters and experiences from the over 600 couples that I've, that I've you know, counseled in my life. Philippians 4, 5. Get this. The Bible says here in Philippians 4, 5. Such a beautiful verse. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Moderation means balance. Moderation means that going to neither extreme in life. So the Bible says that let your moderation be made known to all men. And that's what I'm believing God for when it comes into your life. Have that moderation. That is required to get you to the degree that you are supposed to be in your life. Because if you don't have that moderation, you're not going to have a successful marriage in your life. So I'm saying this to you today. Let that moderation sit in. Let that moderation settle into your union. And as you're watching me today, I'm sitting down here and I'm telling you today. If you're in need of marriage counseling, and you want to make sure your marriage gets back to order online, reach out to us. Reach out to us. And if you're in need of support and you don't know where to go and get help, come and see us on Sunday. We sit here every day at Sunday, 9 o'clock in the morning, and we are, we are ready to engage with you in your union. We are ready to empower in you with you in your union. We are ready to put you first in your union. We are ready to give you the marriage principles that are needed to get your marriage back in line. But if you don't put value into it, you are not going to see it work. So I'm going to have the media team to flight the details right now so that you can see where we are located and be able to enter in. And some of those that we are counseling online through Zoom and through WhatsApp video calls and through WhatsApp phone calls, you can reach out to us today. And get the details that are required so that we can start working on your marriages. So that we can start working on your relationships and give you the proper counsel that is required. 
You can't allow your marriage to fail while we are here. You can't allow your marriage to fail. And our church is located right here in Pretoria North. We are surrounded by, by Wonder Park. We are surrounded by Clarina. We are surrounded by Anlin. We are surrounded by Gazina. We, Centurion is right next to us. We are right here and ready in this studio church to provide you the assistance that is required. But the more you don't put value in your marriage, the more it's going to fail, the more you're going to become a divorce statistic out there. And you can save yourself from becoming a divorce statistic if you are this type of spouse that I've been talking about that values labor as your God. And if you're blessed by today's message, just comment, Amen. Now listen to me carefully. I'm going to pray for you right now. And I'm going to ask God to sit down and start working wonders in your life. And as I'm praying, I want you to comment amen because I want your relationship to come to the pedigree that it must be in. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praying for every individual that is watching right now. Every work of the kingdom of darkness that has been operating against them not to get married. That has been working against them not to live in the marriages that you have designed for them. I speak and raise my voice beyond those altars. And I decree upon their marriages resolutions and sustenance in the name of Jesus. I pray that you may... Work in them right now. A mindset to value you first and not their works in the name of Jesus. If I spoke to couples of this degree and this nature in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you help them to go back to their first love in Jesus name restore them back to their wives restore them back to their husbands help them understand that their first love is important help them understand that their first love is a critical component of their lives I pray for sanity I pray for a spirit of understanding I pray that their work lives not take advantage of them in the name of Jesus by the investment of authority that the Lord Lord is placed in my life I decree right now and declare over their lives according to Job 22 28 that restoration is flowing into their marriages that restoration is flowing into their lives in the name of Jesus you are set free today and the Bible says whom the son sets free is free indeed and you are free in Jesus name now balance your life if you are working right now Close that laptop. Close that machine. Go back to your wife. If you're working right now, close that particular machine as a wife and go back to your husband. If you are there and you are watching me and you are believing God for a powerful relationship, the Bible says test the hearts. Go out there and look at the type of men that you are dating. Look at the type of women that you are dating. It is time to build relationships that are worthwhile in your life. You might be watching me from Nigeria. You might be watching me from the United States. You might be watching me from Ghana, Cambodia, wherever you are watching me from. This principle is true everywhere and anywhere. Begin to value the Lord God Almighty and make work not become your God. The Bible says we must work as unto the Lord. And I'm blessing you today with this word. These are the first set of husbands and wives that put work as their God and nothing else. And today, I'm placing them in front of you. Today, I'm putting it in front of you that it's time to concentrate on your family. It's time to concentrate on your husband. It's time to concentrate on your wife. And we are here to help you. And we are here to be a blessing to you. And we're here to empower you. And we're here to, to minister the graciousness of God in your life. Your marriage is not dead. We can help you. We can empower you. We can be a blessing to you. Don't fight this thing alone. In Jesus' mighty name, this is the word for today. God bless you. As the details are even being given those of you who want to give, those of you who want to sow a seed, those of you who want to tithe, go ahead and impact the ministry. But I'm more interested in your marriage. I'm more interested 
in that relationship. I'm more interested in how far we can add value in your relationship. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. Comment, reach out to us in Messenger. Let us be part of resolving your union in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Tomorrow, I'll be dealing on the second type of a husband and wife. You are in for a great week filled with so much information. Share this with somebody so that they might see a resolution in their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you, Lord God Almighty. Amen and amen.